Welcome back to the Eric Crown Crypto Channel. Wishing you a happy day. Start to slice the last day. It's the last day of April, baby, and it's time to get some May action. Of which today is going to be a big focus on the higher term time frame. Speaking about high term time frame areas of interest to the upside in this case, more or less um, over the next few months here, probably heading into like maybe June or July. What you expect essentially within that time frame, and also invalidations as well. As always, this does need to be complete. But more importantly, I, I do want to be having a big focus on the macro here because there are some major time frames closing tonight which is really going to set in the direction um you know for this next like few months to come basically uh this is you know th this is an important one um other than that i want to once again give the spotlight to the buy promotion going on as i got zero percent on maker fees for derivative contract orders and you can even get the jewel for free for the first 30 days if you follow the directions in the link in the description below and then also if you are concerned about buy going kyc they do have a decentralized exchange arm called apex which i also have an affiliate link in the description below that you can uh, get five percent off off your fees for the lifetime of your account. Anyways, uh, yes, now that we've gotten through the old shill session, let's start off with the monthly over here. And first and foremost on the monthly, um, a few things. I wanted to follow up on a few things, actually. Now, the monthly hidden bullish evidence that we identified in January as being confirmed is still very much active right here, as we do see the monthly RSI lift above the moving average right here, and both of them having a positive slope. That would kind of be the next sort of you know stage of this particular setup. And of course, this is the way that the last few bear markets did, uh, did kind of did bottom uh, on hidden bullish evidence plus as we'll look at soon enough jewel light uh so you know some 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 jewel action in there as well uh but if we go ahead and look at uh, both of these in combination with each other, not only was it hidden bullish evidence on the RSI, it was also hidden bullish evidence on the jewel and the jewel turning white around that moment in January. Again, a good indication that uh, you know big upside moves were coming. So where does that kind of lead us into now? Well, these these are still very much active, um, as far as I'm concerned. In fact, the jewel in this case is still being supported by the DMI as it has that green color in the background. So looking at the chart right here, you know, it, I would be looking at uh, basically sideways enough from here still essentially as long as Bitcoin is now above $25,000 that kind of be like the line in the sand 25 26 if you want to be you know somewhere in there depending upon your time frame now moving into the next chart I did want to get into a bi-monthly chart which is actually gonna be closing tonight bi-monthly <laughs> speaking about transitions and bi-monthlies and all this sort of stuff who knows where the fuck this wordplay is gonna land me maybe maybe a ban on YouTube but more importantly on the bi-monthly chart hidden bullish evidence here as well and that one is is still very much active, still very much uh, likely continuing. Now, two more actually much more important things that could potentially happen, or one of them is very likely to happen. The other one, uh, we don't necessarily know just yet. But the, the second one would be the bi-monthly jewel. In this case, if we see the tick tomorrow turn white, that'd be a damn good indication that this rally still has, uh, you know, that this rally still has more on top of it. Um, now, of course, in the short term, you know that could that could be a bit more sideways, uh, maybe even all the way down to twenty five thousand bucks. But that would very likely be a major opportunity. Um, anyways, more importantly, and what I really want to be speaking about right here is the volatility on the bi monthly, which we can see that is crossing above the BBWP is crossing above the moving average um, for the third time, basically in its in its in its history. Now I've marked off the times where it's actually crossed above and then closed above. And as you can see, these were markers of not just, you know, the lows already, you know, well being in uh, by that point, but really the next sort of march up um, beginning, you know, this one over here is kind of kind of boring for the next couple months after that, but still, you know, marching its way upwards and onwards. In fact, this was also another summer rally, I should say. And this one over here from May, again, actually pretty much directly timed with the one that we're working on right now, which is kind of interesting as well. Um, uh, but again, you know, you did see a bit of a pullback on the next bi-monthly and that, but it was, it was generally upward, you know, sideways and up from that region and pullbacks more importantly were major opportunities. So now that we've gotten through that, I do want to get into something that's completely different, completely, um, you know, completely, uh, uh, something that we just haven't really spoken about, which is a six month chart, a semi-annual chart. And while this one is not closing tonight, it's going to be closing in about two months from now. I do want to speak about, um, the relevancy of it kind of as we have in these next, um, couple months here, because because as you can see from the monthly and the bi-monthly, you know, things generally still looking sideways and up. Uh, again, I think kind of like 
depending upon assuming that Bitcoin basically closes like above twenty nine thousand bucks tonight, you know, I, I think worst case scenario is honestly like twenty five thousand bucks to the downside, and probably going to be, um, you know, uh, again a uh, what's it called an opportunity. But in this case, it is going to have a chance to put in a hidden bullish evidence, which naturally, based upon that, it would have a, sh a short term. I mean, short term based off of six month time frame. So you know, within maybe like the next three closures, so like year to year and a half, uh, you know, would have a more reasonable targeted region somewhere in the like mid to deep 35 uh sorry thirty thousand dollar territory think like 35 to thirty eight thousand bucks and if it gets really crazy then you know basically a retest of the open that we did see from january of 2022 which is a fibo swanee target actually very very close to it at least uh, at around forty six thousand bucks um so that would obviously be the more hopium of those targets but uh but you know, not so crazy when you look at it from this perspective as well. Uh, so far, so good is essentially what I'm trying to say. Anyways, moving on now into stochastic momentum. Uh, just want to check up on this one as the monthly on the stochastic momentum for Bitcoin is still obviously positioned to the upside. It remains with this upside momentum as long as Bitcoin's above 16,750. But something important is about to happen uh, as of, or potentially as of tonight, assuming that things basically close again, anywhere above 29,000 bucks would do it um, or very, very likely do it. And it'll actually cross above the move and average that I have on this as well. So I'm going to put on my drawing tools right here. And first things first, I should denote that when we're looking at the drawing tools, um, you know, should I go over the full spiel on this one? I don't, mm, ah, does it really need to be done? Yeah, I, I guess so. Just for context, you know, first things first, we did see all of these prior lows on this trend line right here, you know, denoting hidden bullish evidence as well. And the crosses represented by these green vertical bars have essentially, you know, been indicative of macro lows being in and the sideways and upside trudge beginning, um, you know, over the next, uh, typically over the next like six months to like two years, basically. Now on the on all of the ones that happened on these uh, particular crosses here in the critical zone, um, we can see that, uh, that that there was an actually there, there was an average move within the next, like I said, um, about half year to a year. Yeah, about half year to a year. And in this case, it was about 223 uh, percent, 223 and a half percent, if you want to be, uh, you know, super accurate. Um, but here's the thing, you know, when we're talking about statistics on this three prior iterations is like not a whole hell of a lot but it is very very interesting that both the percentage gains off of those moves and the time were you know relatively similar to each other in this case over here 284 percent 150 percent right here 238 percent right here you know somewhat close to each other maybe um and then also the time taken you know 180 days 150 days 90 90 days you know, within the vicinity of each other, maybe maybe not so much the last one, but anyways, if we were to go with the average move uh, from that cross to the next major high, not like the end of the rally or anything, but you know, the next major high, it was about uh, a 220% move, which, you know, coming off the low right here, what actually did happen, uh, what would that actually look like? I'm curious. Um, that would be another Fibbo Swanee target, actually. Uh, yeah, deep $40,000 territory. Really fucking interesting right there as well. Um, and as far as time goes, I mean, that happened right here. So we are, yeah, about 121 days into this one. So we'd be expecting this, you know, maybe within like the next uh, couple months here. Um, yeah, I mean, that 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 would put us at uh, 180 days. One month puts us at about 150 days. So, you know, somewhere around there uh, would still be reasonable. So this next month of May, maybe June, sideways and up, uh, still the more likely thing to be happening. Anyways, it should also be known that once the once the uh, stochastic all started across the moving average, that is again another good indication when the rally was really getting going. So I'm just gonna mark it off with um, with one of them right here. I don't want to muddy my charts up too much, but for example, you can see cross on the uh, you know in the critical zone, cross above the moving average right here. Boom, sideways and up. That's essentially what I'm talking about. We'll do one more on this one over here as well, and same thing basically. You can see cross uh on the critical zone right here marking the low and then cross above the moving average right here sideways and up for the next few years so you get the idea anyways i'm going to get rid of both of those because i don't want them to clutter my charts too much but now that we've gone through that i do want to get into the next thing which is a revisiting of the monthly accumulation and distribution indicator uh, chart over here which obviously um nothing drastically uh, has changed about this uh, obviously the chart once again you know more or less called the lows uh we do see that the slope change again or i should explain this might as well explain a little bit of it okay so basically 
the reason, the reason why this one is relevant, the accumulation and distribution indicator is that anytime that we've seen a slope change within the critical zone, whether it be re red or green, we've seen a macro shift in direction um, as well. So it's been incredibly accurate in doing it. I've marked off all of those prior areas for the low to high switch up with the green vertical bars, and you can see them right here. And the green vertical bars have been, you know, more or less a little bit after the lows. And in this case, you know, no different over here as well. But what's interesting about this one is that we're going to see this, this slope turn flat or flat ish, if you will. Now that is actually, uh, you know, some, some people might think that that's cause for concern. I don't think so actually, because when we've seen the slope first initially change from down to up and then get that flat slope, like on these, uh, blue vertical bars here, that has essentially, you know, been a similar indication as what we just looked at when we were looking at the monthly, um, uh, stochastic momentum uh, as being indicative of the sideways and upside trudge beginning. And again, sideways and upside, you know, does include a little bit of downside within there. Uh, in the short term, I think worst case scenario is like 25,000 bucks right now. Um, but uh, but generally speaking, you know, sideways and up was the name of the game after that. Um, and, and again, downside moves were, you know, major opportunities. Anyways, uh, moving on into the next one, I did want to get into the having breakout chart yet again. Uh, I just think it's I I, I, just, I just think it's incredibly interesting right here as well. Um, basically, I mean, if we're looking at this from a uh, you know just from just from a structural standpoint, as long as Bitcoin's above like twenty six five or twenty six six on a weekly closing basis, I mean, this is very clearly uh, you know a base and likely to launch higher. Um, but 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 I did want to do an analysis of the having so. Obviously, Bitcoin's had three prior halvings in its history, um, not including the not not including the one that we're likely to expect in like April or May of next year. That's 2024, obviously. Um, but about a year prior to all of the official halving dates, which are represented by, here by the green vertical bars, we've seen Bitcoin break out from the long term downtrend. So, for example, you can see this one over here. Uh, puts in the long-term downtrend if it's after its parabolic blow off top in June 2011 and boom breaks it right here That was exactly 52 bars before the halving 52 bars on a weekly would be exactly one year um, And so uh, you can see after that Bitcoin rallied up and we'll actually do a statistical analysis of this soon enough But Bitcoin rallied up basically between the 0.5 and the 618 fib right here as you can see um, anyways, moving on to the next uh, cycle, we can see same thing over here. Downtrend emerges. Bitcoin breaks it right here. That's 54 bars before the halving date. Goes on a nice run. Actually comes down pretty hard as well after that. But again, that was a major opportunity. And you can see on this run right here, Bitcoin finds its way somewhere between the 0.5 and the 618 as well. Anyways, moving on into the next one, we can see yet again, another major massive downtrend, downtrend emerging. Bitcoin breaks that downtrend 58 bars before the official halving date goes on a major rip of a run and then comes down pretty damn hard after that as well and uh, and again this one also finding its way kind of around that 618 a little bit higher than that on some uh, on some wicks but on a closing basis around the 618 so we see a lot of them kind of landing around that region anyways what do you know 2022 or 2023 now uh, we do see the same this the same sort of behavior long-term downtrend broken 66 bars before the presumed estimated uh, halving date so we have 52 54 58 66 so that would be uh two four and six or uh eight sorry <laughs> so you can see a very obvious relationship kind of emerging from there it's getting longer over time obviously um but uh but you know it, this one's kind of right on schedule as well which is I, I thought that that was just super interesting. Um, and then also, if we were to kind of go with the past few cycles here, we saw that they all at least met the 0.5 fib and usually found their way closer to the 618. Um, in some cases, a little bit less, in some cases, a little bit more, but around there was kind of like a major area of interest. And in this case, where's the 0.5? About 32,000 bucks. Um, and the 618 is about 38,000 uh, bucks, which I believe is also around one of the major CME gaps. In fact, yeah, we can see right there coming in from April of last year. That's fucking weird. It's like literally one year ago, right? Um, but yeah, you get the point. Anyways, let's go into the actual uh, statistics over here. And I did want to do a little bit more of a granular work on this one as we measure the past three cycles. And on that first initial breakout, the first initial breakout from the breakout to the next major high, on average, it took about 100 days. Well, so far from, from the breakout that we saw uh, officially right on over here, um, it's been this today will be day number 70. So in one month from now, it'll be 
ju- it'll be around 100 days. It'll be around the average, a little bit less than it, to be fair. Um, but uh, but again, you know, looking at the actual uh, data themselves, you know, we're looking at 42, 133, and 126. So you know, 100 being the average could very easily be you know maybe closer to 120, which would be two months from now, which I do think is a little more reasonable, to be honest with you. And the average gain on that first major move. Uh, before the next major uh, crash, by the way, um, was about 140% with um, you know the three iterations respectively being 155%, 102%, and 167% right there. So again, you know, very very similar to each other. Putting that into context from the actual breakout point so thus far, we've seen about a 40% rally almost. Uh, if Bitcoin goes for a 100% rally, obviously that would put it at around 45,000. Um, and if it goes for more than that, then obviously it'll be more than that as well, but I'm just not comfortable talking about that. So major areas of interest to the upside in the next couple months here. Uh, you got 35,000 bucks, th- th- basically the range between 35 to 38,000 bucks. And then you got like 46 to 48,000 bucks basically as well. Um, now that is essentially, uh, as far as I'm concerned, um, that is more likely to happen actually than Bitcoin coming down to uh, even 25,000 bucks as long as Bitcoin is above 26,500 or so on a weekly closing basis. That is to say that invalidations will happen below $26,500 on a weekly closure. And if you do see any sort of a weekly or or, or especially a monthly below 25,000 bucks, then something completely new is very, very likely going on. And we're probably going to see back down to at least 20, but probably, you know, may, maybe the barrels get their wish after that as well. Um, but for right now, you know, does look like things are still within the Blue Laws court, even as crazy as these targets sound as of right now. Um, so uh, so again, if you didn't check out the, the video that I did with Fibbo Swanee uh, on Friday, I would check that one out just because he's coming at it from a completely different angle and coming up with uh, some more, actually some more impressive targets, to be honest with you. Um, he has his reasons for it, obviously. Uh, these, this, these are kind of like the best that I can do for the, for my most bullish hopium uh, myself for as of right now. But again, it all hinges upon twenty six and a half thousand dollars below there. No longer, no longer bula. Um, at least in my, it, it, you know, at least in the way that I look at things. Now, I did want to match this up with traditional markets here too, uh, namely Nasdaq, because you know Nasdaq has a higher correlation uh, with Bitcoin. And what do you know? How did how did Nasdaq close out the month or or the weekly for that matter? Uh, a couple of things. Weekly close as a bullish engulfing dildo, plus Silver Cross very likely uh, in coming into next week, maybe one week after that, but very, 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 very soon here, which by the way, this one, the last time it saw Silver Cross was way back here before this tremendous fucking run from January 2019 to the current all-time highs, you know, and before that, it's <laughs> before that I called the move from March 2016 to, <laughs> to, you know, to September 2018, just insane shit right there. Um, but yeah, that will very likely happen. Um and, uh, and of course, a monthly close pretty damn strong as well right there. So, you know, next move, you know, into May, I think the sell in May and go away thing is is going to be wrong. Um, or at least, you know, when, when we back tested that statement, um, uh, I think it was on last week's video, we found that six out of 13 of the past Mays were either sideways or down. Like in some cases, it's not even down. It was just sideways, which, which did have downside price action, but closed basically unchanged. Um, so I, I don't think that that's like a, I, I don't think that's a statement that really holds weight when you actually look at it. Um, but I do expect, you know, I, you know, at some point I do expect a major pullback. It really just depends how high Bitcoin gets first before initiating the next major high or sorry, be, before confirming the next major high, because what I forgot to go over here now that I recognize it is that after that first major run leading uh, le- leading up to the halving, there was typically a major crash after that as well. Uh, and when I say a major crash, I mean like a percentage loss on average around 40%. So, you know, if Bitcoin were to get up to, for example, like 38,000 bucks, you know, some, somewhere around there, uh, 40% down from there would put Bitcoin like, or if, yeah, it would put it, put it around like 24, 25,000 bucks, may, maybe as low as like 23,000 uh, bucks. If Bitcoin went all the way up to like 48,000 bucks, which again, it, like, not saying that it is because that's, that's a little bit too much for me right now. Uh, 40% down would put Bitcoin at around 30,000. 30, um, should be a tremendous move. Uh, and again, that that move typically happened pretty damn fast as well. Like three months after the high, uh, we did see on average the next major low hit. Anyways, uh, yeah, I think that's a good place for me to be leaked. Um, for, for me to kind of wrap up on this video, we could also go over spy features as well. Same thing, basically just not as strong as NASDAQ right now. Um, but, uh, but I do expect that, you know, 
NASDAQ is the one to be watching as, uh, you know, especially if you're looking at Bitcoin, just because, well, they have a hard correlation with each other, seeing that is that Bitcoin can be one considered a technology and two a financial, though it does trade more or less with the techs. Um, but uh, but yeah, you know, th this this would be indicative that, uh, you know, we do very likely see continuation um, into May, you know, maybe get some short term pullbacks here and there. But just like Bitcoin above twenty six and a half thousand bucks, um, I, I don't really see a reason to be bearish on it. Uh, you know, NASDAQ above 12,800 would be kind of my, my line in the sand for that one as well. Anyways, I think that's a good place for me to be leaving off on this uh, hopium styled video. <laughs> I mean, ho hopefully I can back it up with information here. Um, at the end of the day, you know, hopefully this, uh, that you know, this this is in some way valuable to your own studies and, uh, and analysis. And if not, well, Make sure to hit the like button. And and also, if you don't like the video, also hit the like button as well. No, i just kidding, man. Do whatever the fuck you want to do. I'm going to be signing off on that note. Take care, much love, and see you hopefully soon.